Hello, Paul Anwarder with Medscape Infectious Diseases and speaking from Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Although COVID has taken a, a decrease uh, in many parts of our country, and certainly I'm fielding less calls about it, uh, patients are still getting infected, and I remain worried about my patients that are particularly at high risk, and those would include uh, older patients, uh, those who uh, may have organ transplants, and others as well. And uh, there continues to be a lot of discussion about rebound, and I thought I might focus on rebound because there's been hesitancy for prescribing uh, medications and also in terms of symptomatic management. Already there are challenges for many of our patients, especially with the protease inhibitor Paxlovid because of drug interactions. And for those that can't take it, remdesivir, but that's been logistically challenging uh, getting patients into an appropriate uh, venue that's open to get three days of parenteral drug therapy. So what do we know about uh, rebound uh, generally? And of course, Paxlovid got, has gotten most of the press uh, and in its initial EPIC HR study, about 7% of Paxlovid patients had a rebound uh, compared to about 4% in those that received placebo. There's been a preprint out for some time now that gave some estimates from over 13,000 patients who um, uh, had their uh, EHR uh, records surveyed. And seven in 30-day COVID rebound rates after Paxlovid were about three and a half percent at uh, the one week and at five and a half at 30 days, whereas it was slightly lower for symptoms uh, at 2.3% uh, or 5.8%, again, for seven or 30 days, and only about a half a percent for hospitalization, plus or minus there. And that's not always clearly known to be related to Paxlovid. Uh, although molnupiravir seemed to have higher rates of uh, rebound symptoms or infection, they were often prescribed in older patients or those were uh, with more, more comorbidity. So actually propensity matching found it to be about the same. Um, a cohort study in Hong Kong, which used cycle threshold of under 40, which you could argue might be too high for infectivity, um, had about 1% of patients experiencing this after Paxlovid and about 0.8% um, uh, with Maldipiravir and 0.6% in those that never received the drug. But uh, a recent uh, uh, paper in the Annals of Internal Medicine uh, looked at uh, 563 patients in the active two outpatient trial who were largely unvaccinated at that time. And this was a uh, pre-Omicron, so dates uh, uh, to over a year and a half ago or so. And there, uh, this was very carefully performed with serial swabs and uh, notation of symptoms. And they found a substantial number of patients, 31% experienced rebound, um, and documented infection occurred in 13% with viral levels. Uh, but these were generally, the, the, the symptoms were transient, only about a day. And not unsurprisingly, those that most experienced uh, a viral uh, rebound or symptomatic rebound uh, had higher initial levels of virus in their diagnostic swabs. But importantly, uh, only uh, symptoms and infectivity uh, occurred in 3%. So we don't know the reasons for rebound. It's not understood. And whether it's because the virus is in different compartments of the body, and of course, we're only swabbing the nose or throat. Uh, it could be that there's some viral co-infections that experienced, and certainly that's been described. Could be immunologic, but probably multifactorial. But I was surprised at the substantial number of patients. And of course, many of these people with transient symptoms might actually report it to the office, and we're only hearing people that might have more than a day of symptoms and so on. So. Uh, in any case, I, I still try to convince patients to take uh, a drug, especially Paxlovid, 
uh, if they're eligible, if they're at older ages and with multiple comorbidities, uh, because uh, to the best of estimates uh, from uh, population studies, it will reduce hospitalization, even though risks are now less than 1%. Uh, for the general population, even those with comorbidities. But it might reduce that by 50%. I think that's still worth taking. Uh, for those that wish to avoid it, mainly because of the concern for needing repeat isolation, I certainly understand that, uh, although many people are not nearly as virtuous now to take themselves out of circulation. So uh, although uh, there remain some concerns, I think, Overall, the drugs are helpful. Uh, certainly, the number needed to treat are now higher than in the past before immunization. Uh, and the initial tri uh, registration trials for these drugs. But I hope this information may be po uh, helpful. And, and certainly, the fact that uh, this occurs even with untreated patients is certainly something uh, worth noting. Although, whether this occurs to that degree in vaccinated patients, of course, uh, this uh, particular study, Active 2, did not examine. So thanks so much for listening.